Hello, everybody. Anybody new to my videos, make sure my mic's on. My name is Jeff, and welcome to my little machine shop. We're going to do an, a better internal and external threading video for you today. Um, I did one, and I've gone back, and I've looked at it multiple times, and I wasn't happy with it, but it's been on, it's been on YouTube for a while. It's on there, but I really didn't do it as well as I should have. So I decided to do another one, and this one, I'm absolutely certain, is better. So please... Um, like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I've already done the video. This is me doing the intro after I already did it. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. Um, so enjoy uh, the internal external threading. It's a one and a quarter by 24 thread. Um, I have much better camera angles now. So enjoy and like, share, and subscribe. I love y'all, and uh, here comes the video. I just put the... Uh, the aluminum stock in the four jaw here so we can get ready to do the id thread i went ahead and uh we're going to make sure i indicated it in but we'll do it again i didn't do it in the camera there's 130 we'll go right there we'll zero so i'll show you it's within one thousandth i believe remember the out there at dirty here is, not, is in the raw it has not been machined so that one thousand is probably be pretty difficult to get out i'm sure we could work it out of there but we don't need to for this video. So there you go. It's indicated in. Let's move along. Get the lathe set up to do this ID thread first. There you guys go. You can see that articulating arm I have now. So I went ahead and had the fun to get that. So now we can get the better, better views of this lathe when we're cutting. So we're going to do a one and a quarter by 24 thread. And I've showed you this before. Um, a lot of lathes out there, especially smaller lathes, now, this lathe here is not a hobby lathe. This is a very robust 12 by 36 gap bed. This thing has power. It does, it does beautiful work. This, this lathe was designed to run all day long, every day. Um, it's an, it's uh, exactly what it is. Uh, a gentleman referred to it as a hobby lathe. Um, obviously, that gentleman has no idea what a hobby lathe is or what this lathe is. Because uh, uh, this, is, this is an absolute shop lathe. So anyways, we need to set this thing up. And here's, our, here's where we set up right here. So we're going to do a 24 thread. Um, you have your, your charts right here for feeds and speeds, uh, pitch, pitch charts. So we're doing a, th a 24. Right here is our 24. A 24 thread is C3 M2. And I've gone over this thread before. But for anybody new to my videos, this is how we do it on this lathe. This lathe has... Nothing, uh, all you got to do is turn the handle. So these, these turn when the lathe is running right here. So we're already on C3, and that just happens to be four thousandths of an inch per ro rotation right here, uh, regular feed rate, which I was using just the other day. So we're already set to C3. Now we got to set the M2. So here's your M, here's your 2. And what this does, it, it turns... The feed rod off and the lead screw on or vice versa. And then you have your, your gear select, selection right here. <clears throat> and it's one or two. And that, that's based right here on your gear setup. Most of the threads I've, well, actually every single thread I've ever needed to cut is on this setup, M2. And here you go, 16, 18, 22, 4, 6, 8. These are, the, these are the thread pitches that we cut regularly. Now, if I had to go to a half inch 12, something like that, right there, um, we'd have to switch these two gears around. That would be our Z gear here. So we have 24 teeth and 48 teeth. We have a couple different teeth here. And for 24, we're sitting at 48 on the Z and 24 here, and we're already set up for that in the gear in here let's take a look i'll show you okay so what they're referring to is this gear and that gear right here so these two gears can be swapped that gear can go up here this one goes down here this this center idler here it's adjustable so we never have had to change those gears. Every thread I've ever cut is on that selection. So again, we're going to go 24, C3, M2. C3, M2. We turn it to M, that turns the feed rod on. Okay. So I'm going to get my threading tool in. 
and um, we're going to sit this articulating arm up here a little bit better, try to get you a view down here and watch, watch so we can cut this internal thread. So let's do our internal thread first, and um, we'll get busy on this. So let's move over here to the, to the uh, threading dial real quick. I like number one, this little mark I put there because the little uh, placard they had on there fell off. It wasn't attached very well, so I just took a, a permanent marker and put it right there, right where my engagement is. And on this 24 thread, here's, here's, where, here's our indicator scale, okay? So you have an indicator scale that tells you what number on the dial, the dialing, or a, excuse me, thread dial to engage on. If you go to a 24, which is up here, it's any number. You don't see 24 down here. And here, let's say we wanted to do a 22 pitch. You'd have to, on the dial indicator, the threading dial, excuse me, you would engage on any of those numbers. And you have to go back and always engage on that same number. So you can engage on two, four, six, or eight. If you engage on eight, you've got to continually engage on eight. So we're going to engage, we're going to engage on one, because that's the number I always use for the 24 thread, but we can engage on any number. So we're going to turn the lathe on, turn this on, engage our, our uh, lead screw, and get our thread cut, our ID thread. So let me get busy here, people. Oh, I mean that thumb button again. And uh, we'll get this threading video done for y'all. Okay, I got my little profiling tool in. Let me show it to you real quick. So this is my little profiling tool that I use for doing undercuts. On uh, smaller stuff, I have a cup. I have a larger one as well. <clears throat> so what we're going to do? We're going to do what we're going to do here. We're going to do a 500 deep thread and a hundred thousand undercut. So I'm going to touch the tool to the front, the face of this part here, and we're going to zero right there on the front on the Y. Thread was set to zero. Then we're going to go in. We're going to do a scratch cut and get our our OD set. Um, I already know this is sitting at. Uh, um, 1.250 OD. So our minor diameter is already there. So we don't have to cut this part to a minor diameter, but we do have to go in and do an undercut. So we're going to go in. Let's turn this on and get a scratch cut and figure out where we are. So we can zero because I'm going to do my undercut 5,000 below the diameter of the major. So let's go in. Give me some light here. And get ourselves a scratch cut and see where we are. So I'm going to bring my tool in real slow until I just see a little aluminum come off of it. Just a small scratch cut. Real small. Just touching it. My eyes are so bad I can't. I just got to bring it in slow until I see it. It's coming. Uh, I think we're getting ready to touch. There it is. Right there. So... I'm going to set the, the X to 1.250. Then we're going to do our undercut. Um, so our, our major diameter of the ID thread is 1.305. So I'm going to do my undercut to 1.310. So we're going to back off. Remember, we zero to the face. We're going to go in 600. That's how the 500 thread, 100 thou over undercut, uh, width of our undercut. So we're going to go in 600 deep. And we're going to start plunging in and, and working our tool back out and doing 100,000 width undercut. So we're almost to 600. So that's 600 deep right there. And I'm going to start coming in. So we know we're sitting at 1, 250. I hope you can see in there. I, I'm not real good with this camera yet, but I mean, this, uh, it's articulating arm. So let's go in. 1250 is coming up. I'll look for the cut inside. There it is. I just saw a little piece of aluminum. I see the cut. So we're gonna go, we're gonna do uh we'll do 10, 20,000 at a time, somewhere in there. So we're at 1250, we'll go to 1265. We're gonna back out to 500,000. 100,000 with undercut right there. Go back into 600. Plunge in again. One two six four. One two seven four. One two eight zero. 
hundred thousands back to five hundred. Okay, back in to six hundred. One two eight zero. We'll go one two nine five. Oh, we almost went to three hundred. We'll get it done quicker. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, back in six hundred. So our undercut's almost done. We're going to go 1310. Remember, and there we are. 1310. Come back to 500, and our undercut will be complete. Okay, we're going to pull the tool out. So there you go. You can see the undercut right there. Now I'm going to set the internal threading tool up, and we're going to start cutting threads. I'm going to probably do the first thread for y'all, maybe change the first couple, and then we'll do it on time lapse. Okay, so. Profiling tools out, undercut is cut, and here's our internal threading tool. Now, this is uh, 60 degrees, and this is an inclusive angle. So you have 30 degrees on both sides, an inclusive angle is 60 degrees. That's your common threading tool. Okay, so when threading, you have a zero start point you always return to, and we're going to go in and do an un a scratch cut here, too. Now, I've, now I chase threads on aluminum at 500 rpm um the reason i i, I picked that speed is because the intermediate speed it gives me a decent finish but yet the threading tool is not feeding in so fast it makes it difficult to stop it or difficult to catch my my number one on the threading dial um so that's what we're going to do we're going to do this at 500 rpm so i'm going to go in and do another scratch cut and zero to the id bring my tool back out to my zero start point then we're going to start cutting this thread so I'm going to go ahead and do my scratch cut. Remember, we're at 500 RPM now. I can't see that well again. That damn camera's right, arm's right in my way. Now we'll go in and do the same thing. We just touch. So we just see a little piece of aluminum come out of it. I mean, small. Feeding super slow. Not quite there. That's how slow I feed in. I don't make this. Uh, I don't want to dive into it. Looks like I got about five thousand to go. There it is. It's just here. I just saw a piece of aluminum cut off, and I can see a small scratch right there. So we're going to set that at one point two five zero, and that's our X. One point two five zero zero. That's our minor internal thread diameter. Okay, that's set. Now we're going to back our tool off. We're going to bring it back and we're going to set a zero start point. Okay, and I'm going to set my zero start point right about there. So my Y is going to be zeroed. And we always come back to that zero start point. That's how you pick the thread up with the threading dial number at the same spot every time. Okay, let's, uh, let's chase this first thread. Now, I'm not going to be able to look in here and stop the tool, so I'm going to do it based on the drill. So, I'm going to go ahead, back my tool off, and see what my depth number is here. Where I want to try to stop it every time. So, we're looking at, on the Y, 550. So, as soon as my drill hits around 500, I'm going to, I'm going to stop it every time. Because I'm not going to be able to look in here. I'm literally going to be watching the drill. Then we're going to pull it back out to our zero start point. That's our zero right there. I'm really particular. We're going to come in. We're going to do 10,000 passes. Then we're going to start it. Our well, first pass is going to be done at 1.260. Then 1.270, 1.300, And then we'll do that last five finish. And then we'll do a couple finish passes. And we'll get a pretty a pretty good looking thread. So let's get her set to 1.260. We'll do the first couple passes, then we'll time lapse this till we finish it. So we're at 1260. I like number one on the threading dial. I forgot to turn the lead screw on. So we're going to turn this uh, to M. Lead screw's on. C3, M2. And we're waiting for one to come around. And we're going to stop around 500. Here comes one. We engage. Three, four, five, stop. 
Okay, there's our first pass. Now we got to back it out past the thread depth or height. Bring our back to zero start point. There's our zero start point. We're going to come into 1.270 now, another 10 thou. 1.270 right there. Our one's coming around, our zero start point. And here we go, engage. Two, three, four, five, stop. All right, you've seen the first two passes. I'm going to finish this up in time lapse. Okay, we just uh, did our finish pass, and we're going to do a couple more finish passes and clean this thread up. So we're going to do two more passes at the exact same dimension, 1305. And uh, here comes one. Engage, two, three, four, five, stop. We're going to come back out. Hit our zero start point again. 1305 set. Right there. Engage, two, three, four, five, stop. And we're going to call that. There you go. You got a little bit of uh, discoloration right there, but the thread's pretty good. We'll hit it with a little scotch bright real quick. We don't want to do too much scotch bright because it will remove material. I just want to get that internal done a cleaned up a little bit. Okay, we'll go with that. As soon as I do the, the OD thread and I put a little oil on it and work this, it polishes them to a mirror finish. So there you go. The ID thread is done. Now, I'm going to pull this out. Okay. Take this puppy out of here. And then when I do my OD thread, I'll be able just to, to match this up. Now, you can see I didn't break this edge right here. You know what? Let's, let's, let's do that. I'm going to break this edge. I've done loosening one of the chucks up, so now it's going to be a couple thousands out. I'm going to break this edge real quick. Then we'll take it out. Yep, you can see it wobbling now. That's all right. We'll be all right. I'm just breaking the edge. There we go. Edge is broke. Now let's take it out of here. Yeah, it's smooth. Let's get it out. I'm gonna blow it out with air. But there you go. You can see it. He's beautiful. And that right there has everything to do with me spinning at 500 RPM. <coughs> I've seen other threading videos on YouTube, and these guys have no idea what they're doing. Thread slow. No, <laughs> aluminum might speed, and I would be threading this much faster. But for your sake. Um, I want to hit that number on my threading dial. I don't want to spin it so fast. It's hard to hard to hit it and disengage before it before we run back into our back wall there. So 500 RPM. I generally get a pretty decent looking thread in aluminum. And again, once I do my my OD thread, I put a little oil in here and I'll mat, I'll, I'll work those threads uh, to each other and they'll polish right up, nice and pretty. So there you go. It's already beautiful, but we'll make it better. All right. So, let's take another look at this, uh, my ID thread. I didn't uh, do a real good close-up on it. I hope you can see that. It turned out beautiful. That's right on, that's machine finish right there. You saw me hit it with scotch braid. Um, I couldn't have had the scotch braid on there, but seconds. Um, it looked pretty much that good before I scotch braid it, but the little bit of discoloration I had is gone. And uh, beautiful thread. That's right off right off the machine machine finish so now we need remember our major od here was 1305 and on the board here uh those numbers i'm going to turn this od down to 1300 we'll do a phase two and then we're going to go in and do the same thing we're going to 
So we're going to turn the OD down. We'll go back about 700 just to give us some nice clearance. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go back 600. We're going to do an in undercut. And then we're going to start doing the OD thread. So we're going to get a match to this on OD thread. Okay. Let me get set up here and we'll get moving. Okay. I'm going to do the first couple passes here. So I know this again is around 1250. But we'll do a, we'll do a, a, a skim cut. We'll measure it. And then we'll set the drill. Then we'll cut down to 1300. And this is sitting right around 1500 right now. I think it's about 30, and this is like 1504. So let me get my scratch cut. And then we'll do it in time lapse and finish it up. We'll do the first couple. We'll get our scratch cut. We'll measure it. And we'll do the first couple cuts for you in regular, regular speed. There you go. I forgot to set my zero. I went ahead and faced it off camera. You can see a pretty face on it now. So right there, we touch against the face. We're going to set our Y to zero right there. Because remember, our depth is going to be set uh, 700. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of clearance. Just to make it easy. We're going to come off. Come back. Let's do a scratch cut again. I don't mess that up. Right there. Okay. So let's go ahead. Remember, I had it, I had the feed rod on. So I got to, I mean, the, the uh, lead screw was on. So I'm going to turn it back to the feed rod. And we're going to cut our depth, start cutting our depth and get our measurement, get our drill set up. So here we go. 300 deep, 400 deep, 500 deep, 600, 700. We'll do a little, I'll just do a real little back cut, clean up. So there you go. Now we're going to measure that. We're going to set our drill to this dimension. Let me grab my mic. Okay, I got my... My two to three inch mic here. I mean, my one to two inch mic, excuse me. And we'll see where our measurement is and we'll set our drill up to this. That's it right there. We're sitting at, remember I said it would be right around 1504. It's sitting at 1503 and a half. One inch, five, one, two, three, right around three, five. So I'm going to set my drill. My X, one point five zero. Oh shit! Hold on. One point five zero three five. Enter. Okay, we're cutting to one three hundred. I'm gonna do that on time lapse. Okay, I just finished our one three hundred cut. Did all that in time lapse. Then I'm gonna measure it here. And we're sitting at one. We're about a half a thousandth under three. All right, we're ready to do our undercut. So let's bring my undercut tool in. This is a profiling tool I use for doing undercuts. Um, this is specific, this is a wonderful tool for doing fine cutting, but this is a great tool for undercutting. So let's get it on, and we're going to touch the face. Just touch off real gently. We'll bring the tool out until it just touches, just touches. On our Y zero, remember undercut six hundred deep, and our OD diameter here is one. I'm just going to make it one three hundred. So, yeah, there's 700. So, I'm going to do the same thing, bring it up so I see a scratch. And I'm going to set my drill to 1300 and do my undercut 5,000 below my thread depth. There we go. There's our, there's our cut. See if we're still on it. Okay. I'm going to set the drill on the X to 1. Point three zero 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 it was actually one point two nine nine eight. <laughs> a couple ten thousands below that. So here we go. Our thread depth. Our minor is 
one two forty five. So we're going to go to one two four zero. So I'm going to start plunging in. We're going to come out one hundred thou. Oh shit! I went to six hundred. I wasn't supposed to go all the way to seven hundred. Oh shit! We're going to have a really wide undercut then. I forgot I went seven hundred deep for clearance. So six hundred where we were supposed to go in for an undercut. Oh, let's do it. I'm going to go to 600, so no. kind of messed that up a little bit, I wasn't thinking. There's 600 right there. We should just did it anyways. We go in, bring it back to 500. 500, back to 6. We're at 1.271, 1.255. Back to six. That's one thing about this tool. It doesn't have really cool chip flow. Quite regularly, you got to pull the material off of it. Back to 600. Okay, we're at one, two, five, four. One, we're going to go ahead and do our finish. One, two, four, oh. One, two, four, oh, right there. 500. Go back to six. And pull our tool out. Undercut done. We're ready to set up the threading tool. OD threading tool. A nice sharp insert. No wear. Once you're, if your threading tool has a little bit of wear on there, it'll really affect the finish on your thread. Okay, let's get her to 500 RPM. 500. Remember more. Get a scratch cut. And we'll set our RD. One, three, hundred. There's our scratch. X, one point three, zero, zero, zero. Enter. Okay, set our zero start point. We'll do it right about there. Zero. We're going to come in uh, to 1290. That's the first 10,000th pass. So I'll do the same thing. We'll do two passes and then um, I'll do it on time lapse. So we got to turn the lead screw back on. So we're back to M. Feed right off. Lead screw on. We're sitting at our zero start point. Our depth is 1290. We're waiting for number one to come around. Remember, number one's my favorite. Here it comes. Engage. Oop, I almost missed it. I almost messed that up. I looked up. We're going back out here. I almost fucked that up. Oh, shit. I said... Oh, no. I said a bad word. Oh, shit. Let me, uh... Well, I was going <clears> to <throat> reshoot that. Sorry, I just hit the arm with my head. Because I said a bad word, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just... I'm just... So what happened... As I went to engage, and this is what I was talking about earlier, about the, the threading dial going so fast you miss your engagement point. Well, I was looking down, and where I'm looking, right straight down, right here, the compound is over top of the threading dial. I can barely see the threading dial. So I moved to the left and right a little bit, and when I went to hit engage my threading dial, it actually went past one ahead, and I stopped it real quick before it really messed it up. But then I said uh, a word I'm not supposed to be saying, but I'm just going to go with this. <clears throat> so let's get back to our zero start point and get this thread cut. Okay, we're going to do the first couple threads for y'all. And then we're going to go to the time lapse. Okay, I got my starting point at zero. I'm still sitting at 1.290. I'm waiting for my number one to come around. Here it comes. Engage. Stop. We're going to back out, back at our start point, our zero coming up, zero, we're going to go to one, two, eight, zero, remember 10,000 per pass, and then we're going to time lapse and finish this up. So as you can see, it don't take me long to thread anything. I can do both these threads, are probably done in a 15 minutes. Okay, here we come. Here comes one, engage. Stop, back out, back to zero start point. 
And let's time lapse this and finish it up. Okay. Just did it. Look how beautiful that thread is. Machine finish. Looks like it's polished. And I did the same thing. I took a small piece of scotch brite, and all I did was go down the threads twice with it. I don't want to scotch brite the hell out of this because it'll remove material, make the thread loose. So we got to break the edge. And I got my 45 tool. This is how you break an edge on a thread and not ruin the starting the starting thread. Okay, so let's go in and break this edge real quick. Okay, there you go. All right. Here's our test piece. Oh, got to find that starting thread. There it is. Oh, almost got it. I'm missing it. There it went. Okay, here we go. See, I hit that on my first, first, my first finished pass, my first test fit. Look at that. It was right on. Now we're going to take this off, put a little oil on it, and let me do that. Let me get this oil on here and take. Okay. So what I did, I went and got my Bell Ray penetrating lure. I put some on there. So, and uh, you got to watch little slivers. Boy, that will really ruin your day when doing a thread. Oh, there's one right there. Let me get some air. Okay. We'll get some regular, regular oil. I feel more safer with regular oil than, uh, than uh, Bell Ray. In case there's a sliver I'm not seeing. Okay. Here you go. So we hit it to the number. The little, the little stiff spot right Oh, I see a sliver. I do. I see a little sliver right there. And that little sliver will ruin your entire day. Hit wear again. Make sure. All right, do it again. I still feel a little, a little roughness there. I could have probably did one more finish pass. So I'm going to go ahead and try to um, polish this in real quick. Get the go on. It's going nicely. Remember, I only did a 10,000, so I got a nice engagement. There's going to be no slop. Now nah, my hands are filthy. Hold on. Okay. Where's, uh, I got, I used, uh, got my Bell Ray, but I'd rather use regular oil. Because it, it uh, gives me more peace of mind. So here we go. And this is our first shot. And because we were we set our drill up correctly, yeah, we're doing good. My hands are all oily. Now, <laughs> oh, get her more move this out of the way. So we got it uh, on the first shot. Oh, now it's all oily and I can't grip it. <sighs> all right, I'm trying to get a grip on it. Let me take it out and we'll do it uh we'll do it on at the bench where I can just take it off. Alright. Oh man. Yeah. Amazing what oil does. Okay. I'm gonna pull it out and we'll do it on the bench. We'll talk about this. Okay. I ran the house and got washed washed most of the crud off my hands. Let's give this a shot again. 
All right, there we go. And here's the cool thing about this. There's no slop. My engagement, not only is it a polished, goes on like a polished thread, smooth as, smooth as glass, it has no slop in it. So our engagement's extremely precision. And that's what I'm doing from hitting my numbers on my drill. There we go. That worked out beautiful. So there you go. I hope I just did a better internal, external threading video for you. It's got some oil in it, so it's not going to be as shiny as that one. This is filled with oil. This one just rode on the oil. But still, let me hit that. We'll take this out, and we'll hit it with a, I'll uh, take a rag, and we'll get all the oil off. And we'll show this thread, show this to you. Let me put this back on real quick and we'll get it out. Oh. All right. I'll show it to you right now. Got some oil on it, remember. Beautiful. You can see the oil in the in the in the in the aluminum color in there. It makes it a little dark. And that's aluminum debris. No slop. None. Zero slop. All right. Let me get the camera down. We'll talk about this at the bench. Okay. I just took it out of the lathe. And um, there it is. Let me move this around. I just put the camera on the tripod. I got some numbers on the board we're going to go over. So here it is. Let me, uh, I didn't hit that with a rag. Oh, and these are machine finishes right off the lathe. Try to get some of this uh, oil and this dark aluminum stuff out of that thread. Can you see it? Yeah, I've still got some aluminum stuff in it. I can see it. But she's beautiful. Both threads are beautiful. I got my fingernail down in the rag, trying to get it down into the pitch of that thread. Clean it up. Okay, I knew that one's clean. There you go. You got a beautiful ass. Let's get up here in the light. Okay, so here's our threads. You can see both of them turned out absolutely beautiful. You need light. That's such a hard time with lighting here. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it a little better. Okay. You can see that. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. And you saw it. Hit the numbers on the first shot because it was planned out. To, the, to the, exactly the clearance I wanted. Planned out in the numbers I set in the drill. We cut to those numbers. Fit the very first time. There was no trial fit and recutting. Trial fit and recutting. To the number first time so here we go oh there it is I'm starting to <laughs> all right it's gonna go up and it'll hit that undercut in there all right that's where it's gonna stop those undercuts are identical to the thousands so they meet and stop together. Remember, we did that 7,000. <laughs> I went and did undercut at 700, and I shouldn't have, but there it is. But there you go. Worked out beautiful. No slop whatsoever. None. I mean none. Zero. It does not move. There's no movement at all. I'm proud of that. But again, 28 years. <sighs> We're going 29. Hopefully, I'll be alive for another year. So, we'll take it back apart. So, let's look at these numbers I have on the board. I'm going to explain this a little bit better to you. So, you, you saw a much better uh, angle this time on the videos. There they are again. You got a little bit of dark aluminum in there again, just from screwing on the other. You see a little black line. That's aluminum debris and dust in the oil. Beautiful threads. Okay, let's take a look at the board. 
I think you can see this. Let me adjust this just this a little bit. All right. Okay. There we go. So this thread is cut to to this. <clears throat> And this is basically what you're doing. You use your ID thread, your OD thread. That's your undercut depth. I got 008 below the thread depth. Remember, we, I went to 05. I went to 1.240 uh, undercut depth. My thread depth on the OD thread was 1.245 deep. Our major diameter, we cut to 130. And then the ID thread was pretty much opposite. 1305 major diameter, 1250 minor diameter. And there's, there's more to a thread than just this, but <laughs> for the most part, when you're chasing threads, these are the numbers you want. You want your major and your minor diameters. Now, remember, I, I split my clearance on both. A lot of people will cut a thread, then they'll just keep cutting at the, say they cut the OD thread first. Okay? Then they go and cut the ID thread, and they just keep cutting ID thread until it screws on. So they put all the, all the clearances in one side. I split my clearances. I put 5,000 clearance on the OD and 5,000 clearance on the ID. And that's what you see right here, 1305. One three hundred. There's five thousand clearance right there. One two fifty. One two four five. There's your five thousand clearance. So we have a ten thousand clearance, a five thousand split. So we split the clearance on both sides to get a precision engagement. That's why it doesn't have any slop in it. Clearances must be split for precision engagement. Also, feed with the cross slide, not the compound. I've seen threading videos on YouTube. People are teaching people wrong, flat out wrong. <laughs> you do not use the compound to feed in. Um, they are, they're, they're explaining it as you use the, the flank side of the cutting tool, the threading tool, that to give your right, the right side flank a little clearance as it's running, the, chasing the thread. And they're teaching people that. They're saying, oh, you turn in with the cross side or the compound. No, you do not. I set my, my compound at 29 and a half degrees, but I feed in with the cross slide. Now, if I did a, um, a real coarse thread, I mean really coarse, I would probably feed in with the compound a little bit just to get a little bit of that flank removed to get uh, relieve the tool a little bit. But anyways, here's our numbers. This was that easy to do this thread. It was that easy. You saw it. Um, I'm going to put my email in. The description um, if you have any questions you can email me uh, it's literally that simple <laughs> um, yeah just email me if you have any, any questions about this and um, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you but you saw it with your own eyes beautiful thread cut um, how we do it how easy and how fast I did that I did both those threads um, I, I cut them both um, perfect the first time in under 15 minutes i don't even think it was 15 minutes it was probably more like 12 minutes um it doesn't take long but you gotta remember that this uh, this id was already cut to 1250 so i didn't have to do much there so let's turn this back around here okay let's get my beautiful machines in here <laughs> i love my machinery but anyways yeah so we didn't have to go in and and, and turn turn the id to a to our uh, minor diameter we didn't have to do that it was already there so that saved us some time this here we did that was one and a half inch we had to take two hundred thousandths off of it to get our one three hundred and uh hmm. but there you go everybody thank you very much uh for watching my videos please like share and subscribe um i appreciate every one of you that uh that are watching my videos, I'm, I'm grateful. And um, we're gonna get on the, the part, I think we're on the part 12 of the AR. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm getting a restriction in my throat now uh, with the pulmonary fibrosis. Um, 
I'm going to try to keep myself off the camera. I'm breathing well right now. The air conditioner is running. It's nice and cool in here. So it's a little easier to breathe in the cool air. So I'm not struggling right now, but I've, I've been getting much worse. I'm much worse. Um, I'm going to Hopkins on Friday. They've moved my appointment up a month. Um, but it's, uh, it's getting to a, it's getting, uh, it's getting crazy. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm still hanging in there. Anyways, thank you very much for watching my videos. I love you all. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. It is Wednesday. <laughs> it's easy for me to forget what day it is. Day, day, what day it is. Anyways, um, I'll try to get part 12 up here soon. I had to order a few, few things uh, to get moving on part 12 and beyond on that. Um, I'll probably get on that in the next week. I'm not sure I'll even make it this weekend. I'm not sure everything's going to be here to do it, but we are still moving forward. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with the mill now. Um, I'm just having buyer's remorse and seller's remorse all at the same time. Um, I love that little mill. I know how good it is. I got it tuned in so well that it's really, really worrying me to sell it and have to go through tuning in another mill. Um, or um, just hanging out and saving some more money to get a much higher end mill. Um, they got a new, I think it's a, it's a new knee mill, the 739, I think it is. And uh, I would love to have a small knee mill. I mean, that's just the way to go, period. Um, the new small knee mill that they, are, they now have, you, it, the head moves in all, all directions on the X and Y. So you can tram it in perfectly just with the with the head. You don't have to bull crap to go through on the on the column like you do on these. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm I, I I want a new a bigger mill a new new you know a new mill because um, like I said in the last uh, one video on this mill I didn't seek to buy this mill. I was looking for a much bigger mill. I wanted more rigidity, more weight um, for better and heavier cuts. But I ended up with this, and this little mill is fantastic. Um, I haven't had a capacity issue at all, and I can do some incredibly deep cuts with that mill. It's insane how well, it'll, how deep it'll cut, and how big a cut you can do with it. But anyways, this is that. Um, I love you all very much. Please like, share, and subscribe my videos, and uh, have a good rest of your work week. And we'll see you in the next video. Forgot I was on the remote. Love y'all.